hello and welcome back to a new Unreal engine for you video so today's video is actually uh, quite interesting because we are not going to work only with our beloved unreal engine but uh, i'm going to to give an introduction how to use houdini with unreal engine uh, i got few requests about uh, how to do digital assets uh, yes this video is not going to be about digital assets because i found uh, other things uh, more impressive and have less videos or less tutorials covering it uh, but yeah let's uh, let's uh, try to cover some of those things first and, and later we can uh, cover digital assets but anyways this is like a first video in a series where we will be uh, doing several integrations between Houdini and Unreal Engine but in the past two or three years Houdini became a very powerful tool uh, for game developers Anyways, let's just skip this intro and uh, this video is about how we can export vertex animations from Houdini to Unreal Engine or actually how we can make it. So this is, uh, let's consider it like introduction for you on how to use Houdini and at the same time how you can use Houdini to serve yourself in Unreal Engine. So uh, what I'm going to do here is actually I have no idea but let's start with something basic i'm just checking what we have here okay let's let's do a, a fluid uh i'm going to insert a flip tank uh if you have no experience with houdini so you might need to watch a video or two about like the user interface or shortcuts or things like this but anyways i have inserted here what is called flip tank which is basically a uh, fluid tank uh, so this size might be okay for our for our test it's fine uh, and let's export let's make sure we are exporting not that much let's say 150 frames or something i just don't want to waste too much time in processing and caching so yeah if you see this is what happens actually it's just fluid and nothing fancy happens here so let's make something fancy uh, let's come here just to be more organized this is initial this is my fluid okay uh, I will add sphere here and I will move it maybe here uh, we are not going to send this sphere to to unreal or something uh, okay it okay no shit it's better okay uh i'm going to come here and give it some keyframes let's say here and here as you see my keyframes are in green color and let's let it settle for a few frames and so let's make it jump again or something and let's make it uh sorry it's yeah so, so what happens here let's make it stay here oh, i'm imagining that the float will be moving so i'm just giving it some time to settle down and then let's move it back again so and if we do re-simulate you'll see there's nothing fancy happens the float's still the same because basically our uh our sphere is not affecting yet so let's select the sphere and come here to collisions and let's Add a deforming object and let's hit play and this is beautiful and again okay this is good and actually enough uh, so uh, I'm going to increase the details here uh, from my initial here let's say the particle uh, this particle separation if you don't know if you, whenever you like reduce the value it means the distance between particles is less so you have opportunity to get more particles low so for this test i'd say 0.1 is good enough you can have less but uh, it takes more time to simulate yeah you see it takes more time so anyways uh i'm going i'm i'm very satisfied i have a fluid it does something impressive and if we jump to one frame like here you see it, it's the float is already moved we can actually visualize this and see how it looks like uh, 
we can put this node for testing and we can see how it looks like actually so this is how it will look like in the final result without the art frame actually so let's uh, remove this and let's save my file I already saved in my desktop in a folder uh, and just um, taking my microphone far away so I can type on my keyboard so I, I will start caching this because actually this is not a good way to, to watch how it looks like so I will cache it and uh, I will make the video running quickly and after cache will continue So my cache is completed and now I can uh, happily disable uh, this node for the cache out I can disable the flood which is actually visualizing the flood for me and I can uh, start loading this cache so just, just like to give some fancy names so we can load it from uh, so it's I sit it next to the project itself uh, here so it's in my desktop, Houdini, uh, this, ah, not this one, sorry, this is the Unreal project, so, yeah, it's here in JU, and you can see it has this name, I didn't change anything with the name, and, yeah, this is how it looks like, so, fantastic, so, we can actually still able to visualize this from here using the particle fluid surface, and this is how it would look like so it might be a little slow because it's like uh, constructing the mesh every frame quickly but it looks nice so this is what I like to export to Unreal Engine and see in Unreal Engine so I'm going to save and I'm going to add uh, an export vertex animation export here uh, in the out. So the easiest way to add this is through the new game shelf. Uh, you might don't have it here. I have resetted my UI so you can see what you will have with an initial Houdini setup. But yeah, I will add it from here uh, from this little plus. You can add the entire shelf or you can add it as a tab. And I like to add tabs more than shelves. Uh, shelves confusing me. So I'm going to add the content of this shelf as a tab here. And I'm going to just press Vertex Animation tool. So here in the Vertex Animation, I can later we can explain what is, are those methods. But there are several methods uh, being made by side effects. Uh, the one we're using here is Float. So basically, Rigid is mostly used when you have uh, lots of rigid body simulation. Let's say uh, something falling apart, a building get destructed or something. Uh, soft is usually used with things that have the same topology, same vertex count, same polygon, same everything, aka close or something. Uh, fluid is what we are going to use here because basically this is a fluid and fluid usually might not have the same vertex count. For example, now we have this amount of vertices, but later when we start to have, we have more vertices, more deformations, not same topology. So this is very important to set. Uh, the export node what we need to export from our project here so I'm going to set this to uh, we can set it to the fluid we can set it to the cache out but I'm going to set it to the cache in so this is the last thing I, I worked with uh, target poly count let's set this to something very high it doesn't matter uh, texture size let's say this uh, 248 
we might need less, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I didn't make any math for this. And I will let it export at the same directory where my file is, but it will create or find a folder called export, and then it will add the mesh and the, and the same name here and the position. Uh, we can export color map, but as you see, I, I didn't add any fancy colors or things here, so I just, it's enough to export uh, the, the VA uh, texture and the mesh itself. And one thing very important to keep in mind that we start with frame one, we end with frame 150, which means we have uh, 149 frames. This is uh, to remember. And uh, BBOX max and BBOX min, we have to remember those values. Uh, so we are set to go. One last thing we do. So we are exporting fluid. So we can open this and copy this. What is this? This is actually a material code. Uh, this is the code where you you paste in Material Editor in Unreal Engine and it will create all the nodes for you. It's really an amazing feature, it's something nice from people at SideFX to create this. Uh, so yeah, we can just hit render. And done. So this thing usually takes time. Uh, this is the worst part of using uh, Applications like uh, Houdini or Reflow or anything that requires caching and paking and those type of things. Anyways, so this in uh, with here in the export we have uh, this mesh file, the FBX, and we have the EXR, which is a texture. So we can open our uh, Unreal project. This is uh, basically a third-person project. I didn't add anything here yet, so I'm going to create a folder and let's call it uh, just FX. Uh, usually you have more organized project, but this is not a problem right now. And let's import everything in here. So import all and save. So if we drag and drop our mesh, we'll see nothing, it's just a few little triangles that does nothing at all. So we go here to Houdini and remember we export it as fluid, so we come here to the fluid and we copy the material. Again, I already have it in my clipboard, but uh, let's copy it again. And let's open the material here. As you see, it's just normal material. It have nothing. We just delete this node and paste. This is what we already copied from uh, Houdini. Okay. Okay. Let's move everything. Okay. So we have to connect this to the base color. As it will document it, it tells you what you need to connect. So it's metallic, and this is a specular. And this is for the roughness, and this is for the normals. And then you have to connect the worldly position offset, which is the most important part here. And then you need to connect the UV0, 1, and 2, but you don't have it here, so we are going to, yeah, as, as it tells you here what you need to do actually. So we are going to disable uh, the tangent space normals and make sure our custom UVs. Or three. So now we have three different UVs that we can connect. Let's connect this uh, UV0, UV1, and UV2 and save. So this is set to go. We can use this material and actually it will be automatically applied here and you see things get hidden. Uh, so we are going to create a material instance based on this material so it would be easy for us to control the parameters. So we're going to apply this as a parent. And here we have the bonding box, the bonding max and min, and we have the number of frames uh, and the position map. So the position map is this map. And from here, we can copy this as the maximum value. And let's put it here, bonding max. We start getting some weird shapes, and then this is a bounding minimum. Uh, we can put it here. Looks nice, beautiful, 
and the number of frames it's 149 then we can save and let's apply this material to the object here it looks a little weird it's not what we expected to see in here and this is non-issue it's not actually an issue but this is something uh, we can solve so if we select the mesh itself and we open the import settings we have something called build settings and because we are toying a lot with UVs we have to turn off full precision UVs and save just remove this and put a new one apply the material uh, the issue still exists let's make sure we're ready ah okay full precision UVs it's fine yes and we have here the bounding the bounding the number of the frames is still fine Oh, okay, shader was compiling, so everything is alright. Yeah, I was checking if I have different frames number because if this is different, it will be totally messed up because the texture working based on this. So it looks really beautiful and it costs almost nothing, like it, it doesn't cost that much. Uh, if we check here, like in play mode, and we check the shader complexity here. It's totally green. This is amazing. So also you can do lots of fun stuff. So you can like uh, play with. Let's, this is this is something come out of the box from the shader we already got from Houdini. You can change the metallic of the surface, or let's say we can add a texture for the color. Uh, sometimes I like uh, when I do tests I like to apply the same texture here it looks really nice <laughs> and looks really beautiful uh, let's have a look how it looks like wow so it's amazing yeah so yeah this is how you can uh, export vertex animations from Houdini and quickly using it it's totally out of the box using the new game shelf uh, from side effects you can easily insert the node it handles everything for you. you don't have to keep adding those things it's totally added automatically for you uh, also it, it shows you the code for the material so you don't have to waste your time uh, constructing a very complex material to be used like this material it's already came for you, it's well documented, you can just plug in some nodes and change some values and then you can use whatever you made in Houdini and easily you can uh, come to Houdini, let's say you, you need to change something with the simulation it's very easy, you change some things and you cache and then you just hit render again to, to send and when you come back to Unreal you just tap your mesh or tap your texture both together and you just re-import and then you get the most recent data why you might would like to use this uh, the answer is simple because you can do lots of fantastic stuff using this technique it's not only for fluid uh, there's lots of examples out there uh, from side effects they are trying to push this a lot uh, you can do this not only in unreal engine but in pretty much any other game engine uh, houdini is very flexible and very integrated with other engines so I hope this was like a clear video on how you go through the process of sending such a thing from Houdini uh, to Unreal Engine and using it. Um, later I might add some more videos about how to use Houdini to do stuff uh, in terms of Unreal Engine. Um, I hope this was useful, this was not uh, a long video and don't forget to like, share, subscribe and leave your comments if you have any questions. And see you in the next video. Bye.